to kick off our first panel discussion for the afternoon, I wanted to touch on the topic of SDGs. We've heard it mentioned a number of times throughout this morning's session. So the focus is really going to be on SDGs for the next session. Sustainable development goals are an ambitious and universal call for action to end poverty, protect the planet, and ensure that all people enjoy peace and prosperity. How can we advance SDGs through impact investing? My colleague Nitin Jaiswal will lead the next panel. Thank you very much, Nitin. Okay, so good afternoon. First of all, uh, thanks to Kunvitai for his uh, remarks and always has been an inspiration what Thailand is doing in terms of uh, ESG. So the way we want to approach this panel is focus on two elements. Uh, one is a learning and the second one is the takeaway. Okay? And before I introduce my panel, I just want to give a quick uh, remark. So in 2015, the whole development goals were announced so that the work can start from 2016. They came up with 17 goals and 169 uh, milestones and targets, and all this to be achieved by 20, 2030 and require an investment of around $50 trillion for us to achieve all the goals. We are three years down the line, and the progress at best has been okay. <laughs> so what we want to find out in this background from the panel is what are they doing in terms of their strategies towards the development goal? What has been their learning? And the second most important takeaway for us is going to be, what are the key challenges which, is face, which all of us are facing which we need to address so that we can achieve the goal by 2030. Okay? So what we are going to do is, uh, I'm going to start with, as I keep uh, introducing, then uh, I'll start with uh, David. And uh, David is with, uh, sorry. Oh, uh, yes, I'm uh, with Alliance Bernstein. Bernstein, yeah. And uh, so he represent the asset management side of the business. And the interesting thing about this panel is, uh, one, we are from, uh, six of us from four different countries, so good diversity, and each one of us come from a different uh, background. So we have asset management, family office, a platform, a corporation, and a foundation kind of effort. All of them trying to solve the same problem from different approach. And that is what we are trying to learn from this session. So David, let's start with you. And from your perspective as an investment manager, what is your strategy which you are adopting to solve the problem of our sustainable development growth? No, thank you very much, Nitin. Um, I think for us as an asset manager, uh, it's very clear to us that uh, ESG integration uh, is important, it's essential, and it's done across all of our active strategies full stop. Uh, we really think it would be a major glaring omission on the part of our fiduciary duty for us not to integrate ESG into our investment process. However, uh, we also want to offer uh, other strategies uh, which we at AB call portfolios with purpose. And we want to be able to define strategies that uh, can actually solve some of the world's most pressing problems. And I really think that the 17 UN Sustainable Development Goals are a great way of defining uh, some problems and then also finding ways of offering solutions. And so. For our flagship uh, equity and uh, uh, fixed income strategies, we have taken the 17 UN Sustainable Development Goals. We've actually looked at all 169 sub-goals, and we have looked at where you can get private sector participation. Because how do you solve a, a 50 or tr 60 trillion dollar problem? It's not gonna happen from government subventions or from donations uh, uh, alone. You will need to have the private sector involved. And so what we want to do 
is to have a strategy that actually can uh, identify the companies that will uh, contribute to those goals and uh, specifically uh, measure the revenue contribution of those companies to the specific goals. So as an example, right, um, we can see from the uh, uh, health goals of the, the, the UN Sustainable Development Goals that, uh, uh, you know, ending or, or trying to have the number of accidents uh, from roads by the year 2030 is one of the goals. And so if we can identify a company that uh, contributes, uh, you know, most of its revenue from trying to end those sorts of uh, accidents by, uh, you know, providing sensors for, uh, you know, lane departure warning systems and, and uh, ADAS systems, that will materially impact uh, our world and make it a safer place. Now, I just want to make one more point, which is uh, what we do is first map all the sub-goals and then identify the industries and products and companies that actually contribute to those goals. And so, therefore, the Sustainable Development Goals are at the beginning of our process. And what we want to avoid is what was uh, spoken of this morning, which is uh, rainbow washing uh, of people just sticking on the STGs at the end of their process and saying, oh, yes, you know, we, we do, you know, contribute to these as well. Yeah, uh, and Lee. So he is the head of Sustainable and Impact Investment at uh, LGT Singapore. Uh, largest family uh, private banking and the bank and so we would like to hear from you and as a continuation to what David talked about how are you going about in terms of advising your clients and also managing money in achieving the sustainable goals Th thanks Nitin I, I think I totally um, resonate with what David mentioned right I think um, you know, if you take a step back and connect a little bit with what we saw in the earlier sessions, and just by way of quick introduction, LGT is a um, banking and asset management firm uh, owned entirely by the princely family of Liechtenstein. So I have the, uh, the unique privilege of working with a family that is 900 years old and 30 generations. So when you have that legacy, sustainability is really built into the family's DNA and therefore the philosophy of what we do as a firm, whether how it is how we invest and how we operate. So against that background, uh, connecting a little bit with the previous sessions, um, you know, the ESG space that's really dominated a lot of the conversations here today really grew out of risk, uh, uh, risk and knowing where your fires are, so risk and disclosure. And that really came from the public markets. But impact investing, on the ha other hand, grew from the private markets, right? And that's really focused on solutions and driving that impact. Now, obviously, what we see here today, which is extremely encouraging, is there's a convergence of these concepts because ultimately investors are looking to drive uh, sustainable returns in a way that de-risk and hopefully drives a positive social development for one of the SDGs. So we see the SDGs as a very powerful narrative of that because it changes the conversation from knowing where your risks are to what are your outcomes and how you generate a positive impact. So we as a firm see the SDGs as not just uh, an area of 17 problem areas, we see that as 17 opportunity sets. And when you apply that to, to, to Asia, I mean, they're backed by some of the strongest drivers in, in ASEAN and more broadly Asia, right? Because you're, you're thinking of the rise of the emerging consumer, you're thinking about very attractive demographics, you're trying to give access to basic goods and services from healthcare to education and so forth. All of these map very nicely with the SDG goals. So uh, from the money managers, what I heard is essentially this has to be the starting point and don't look this as a problem, but look this more as a solution. So there's a good uh, two key uh, takeaways. So let me move to the corporation, okay? And let me introduce uh, Colleen Palaganas, if I get the name right. It's the Vice President Sustainability at SM Investment Corporation, and she comes from Philippines, yes. okay? And as a corporation, how are you trying to solve the problem related to the sustainable development growth? Yes. Um, the Philippines obviously has a very big demand on uh, uh, solutions, social solutions and environmental solutions. Um, so for, for those not too familiar with SM Investments Corporation, SM Investments Corporation is the largest conglomerate in the Philippines and our, we have interest in retail banking and property development. 
uh, and some other equity investments. If you, the combined market capitalization of our bank, our property holdings, and SM Investments Corporation itself uh, um, accounts for 29% of the Philippine Stock Exchange. So what does that mean for us? Um, the impact when we see SDGs, um, as a corporation, our responsibility to create positive impact in our community and provide solutions as part and parcel of our strategy is tantamount, of course, to our footprint. And given that SM has this footprint, it has this responsibility. So what we did is, what we do really is, we have a strategy we call um, a Path to Sustainable Growth. So the Philippines, we have 7,000 plus islands, and we have, we have a need to develop economic hubs a lot of economic activities to bring about um, third class sit, uh, municipalities or uh, cities to, to bring it to the first class city. Now with our portfolio, we uh, made a deliberate decision to leverage on each of the, uh, the portfolios we have. We have an integrated property, so if we bring it in, with the development, and we bring in our retail, we bring in our banking, products and services, innovative products and services for banking. We are able to leverage on this to contribute to SDGs. And we identified SDGs that we can uh, naturally, material to how we do our business, contribute. So number one, we have uh, economic uh, opportunities, jobs, and economic growth. So as the biggest retailer, we work with about 25,000 SMEs. So we see this as a big opportunity, and if we leverage with our bank by providing services for them, not only, uh, well, financial is what they need, no capital, we give that, and then we provide a market and uh, as the biggest retailer, we have like mil millions of footprint every day. And it will bring the MSMEs into mainstream retailing. So this is how we see it. On, on, and, and then with that, as we have so much tenants and also suppliers, um, with our footprint, we are able to generate direct and indirectly about 350,000 jobs. And in the Philippines, this is very much what is needed because uh, we are entering, the UN had mentioned that we are entering a demographic sweet spot of which um, the working age will, uh, um, uh, will be more than the dependency age. And I think this is very unique globally because uh, as generations are aging, the Philippines is entering with a heavy... So, so, so essentially from your perspective, uh, like the poverty elevation is one of the key themes of 17. Uh, that could be one of the themes which, through your uh, business activities, you're trying to solve. Yes, and yeah. yes, and the other one is, um, so the MSMEs, and then of course the Philippines is, uh, as we know, is one of the most um, vulnerable to the effects of climate change due to its position. We have about 20 to 25 typhoons every year, and we have a lot of losses in business and uh, private uh, assets. So we have invested in disaster resilience. 10% of our capital expenditure in all our integrated cities are into disaster resilience. So we, we put in water catchment, taking in the flood of the cities, yes. which is very big for the Philippines. And of course, another one is our power. The Philippines is facing one of the most expensive it's electricity. You know, something, and Colleen, uh, you know, I would like to revisit on the climate side because that's something which all of us uh, kind of care about, and I think that has been the big focus. And, uh, but I just want to quickly uh, yes. go to the spirit of time uh, to uh, Cherry Nur Salim. And I think so now we move to Indonesia from Philippines. So we have been to Hong Kong, Singapore, Philippines, and we come to Indonesia. And she not only runs a large corporation, but at the same time, as a part of the foundation has done a lot of initiatives to what we call the blended finance way to solve some of the problems related to sustainable development growth, which you did in Bali. Okay. So can you share from your perspective, both corporation and foundation, how are you trying to solve this problem? Yeah. Thank you, Nitin. Um, I, I just uh, had a meeting this morning with uh, Chatsiri from uh, owner of Bangkok Bank. 
and I think uh, we are on the same uh, MIT uh, board for Asia, and I think we uh, have been discussing about impact, about sustainability, and uh, these issues. I was very heartened to see how Thailand has really uh, led the way in, in this area and the ESG. And uh, for us, um, our we are a business group, and uh, I I just want to come back to Thailand because we, I'm working on a project uh, in Bali, and I see a lot of similarities or sort of cultural and other elements. And I know we all just had lunch. Um, and uh, I know SDGs 17 goal is a heavy kind of a topic. But the first thing we did, um, because I was sort of uh, uh, invited to the UNSCS and Leadership Council and alignment of uh, Global Universities Network and the chair for Southeast Asia for UNSCSN. And one of the first things we thought about is how to get people to learn about the SDGs. And so the first thing uh, I discovered, and I'm going to show this to you, is, um, can you see this? Uh, it's uh, happiness uh, at the top. Um, sorry, my notes at the back here. So it's happiness <laughs> at the top here. Um, and then uh, the three layers is like a pyramid, right? This is goals one to ten. It's about social causes, people issues, whether it's poverty, whether it's health, whether it's inclusive growth, uh, it's all linked to people, social. And goals 11 to 15, whether it's sustainable cities, consumption, biodiversity, is linked to ecology. So uh, people, planet, and goals 16 and 17, peace and partnership, uh, I put it under spirit, we put it under spiritual. So it's the harmony of people with planet, with the spiritual. You know, that's when we find happiness. This is actually premised upon a Balinese uh, Trihita Karana philosophy. And so one of the things our foundation did last year at the World Bank IMF annual meetings, which was the largest um, finance event for the year, uh, we held a Trihita Karana Forum on Blended Finance. And you were there with the Prince of Liechtenstein. And so we, uh, we, we partnered. It was kind of a large global alignment. So World Bank, IMF, OECD, World Economic Forum, ADB, um, Milken Institute. Uh, um, I think it's uh, many of the countries uh, that are also aligned, uh, who are part of this blended finance movement, also believe in this happiness approach and supporting the uh, uh, awareness as well as uh, the various uh, uh, aspects. I think earlier you talked about the business side uh, and, and also how to blend the business and the public. And so I think the idea of blended finance is that government uh, or some is other philanthropic funding uh, together with the private crowd in the private sector funding. So uh, I think because uh, there is a shortfall of a few trillion, three trillion dollars annually, uh, and I think one of the solutions to for longer term projects is to actually be more innovative in the financing structure, and that's the premise of blended finance and our event in Bali, we mobilized $10 billion uh, from many aspects from the launch of the first SDG infrastructure fund by SMI in Indonesia to a billion dollar women fund and many other climate and other funds. And so I think uh, we, we are very heartened that this is moving, but uh, I think we do see many other aspects, and we would like to work closely later on you know, what you have done. And yeah. Thank you. So, okay, so I think the two learnings for me, uh, you know, talking to the two ladies, is uh, running a corporation is uh, go local. So, in case of SM, they have identified the challenges uh, which the country is facing, where they have more control and trying to solve those problems. And from your perspective, when you have the reach as a foundation and as a corporation to leverage to get the stakeholders in, what you managed to do in Bali to really identify the problems and specific ones and go after that. 
Okay? And the blended finance is something which I thought was very interesting, which we could actually take offline to have more discussion on that. Okay? So we have big money, big corporations, and uh, they won't be able to solve most of the problems. Most of the things have to start small, okay? and they need a platform, and they need that encouragement to do that. So now let me introduce uh, Francis, who actually is the chair, uh, CEO and founder for Social Ventures in Hong Kong. And he owns a platform which actually encourages the social enterprise to come up with the ideas uh, which uh, Cherry was talking about to take it to the next level. Can you share something how you're trying to solve the SDG problem from your perspective? Thank you, thank you. So I think uh, from a practitioner's perspective, I think it's very important for us to right now turn some of our compassion and passion into the real action. So I think Social Ventures Hong Kong, we are an impact purpose organization founded since 2000, 2007. So we committed to deep dive into Hong Kong issue. We invent, incubate, and invest into the local innovations. So ranging from um, the very first wheelchair, wheelchair accessible taxi to a running movement that we spread out the world on long distance run. And then we also have a co-working factory, try to bring the inclusive employment with the women empowerment together. So um, uh, eight years ago, we founded the very first um, affordable housing initiative in Hong Kong. Because Hong Kong, although we are rich, but we are having a lot of subdivided units, uh, people living in very small areas. So I think right now we have collected more than 130 apartments. Late, uh, recently, we turned that into uh, working with the government. They launched a social housing movement and then policy uh, in the government policy. And then we also work with uh, one of the big developers in uh, getting their land to launch many of the uh, life village, we call it a new product, on uh, working on affordable housing. So I think one example I want to quote uh, in more um, uh, in-depth, I think is on the climate issue. So we have a project, uh, Social Ventures, called Green Monday. So we're advocating one day meat free. It's that simple. So uh, not a lot of people get to know, 14.5% of our carbon emission is actually coming from the meat industry. So growing one cow for one year is like driving for 70,000 kilometers. Uh, any vegetarian in this, in this room? Oh, thank you, just one. Hey, uh, including me too. Uh, <laughs> I'm three. You, you're two, okay, good. <laughs> so I think it's a real impact if we start with our dining table. Just one vegetarian meal a, day, a week is already a big impact. So I think right now, apart from advocating with a lot, with a lot of celebrities, we turn the Hong Kong flexitarian population, meaning at least one day meat free, from 5% to 23%. So easily more than 1.6 billion uh, million people in Hong Kong practicing it. Apart from that, we provide solutions. Right now we have a product called uh, Green Common, it's a spin-off. We have a concept store promoting plant-based diet. So uh, you heard about Beyond Meat. After the next successful IPO, we are their Asia distributor. So in case you haven't tried Beyond Meat, right now we launched Taiwan, Thailand. You can try it in Bangkok if you haven't tried it yet, in Singapore as well. So I think uh, with this whole supply chain, together with more than 20 plant-based brands, we try to promote plant-based diet in a more practical way. You replace your protein with a equally delicious and rich uh, meal, but without taking you away from uh, the good food. So I think that's the wisdom behind promoting the movement here. Okay, so uh, I, I think if I conclude the first part, for me the key takeaways, uh, you know, just to summarize the conversation uh, for us, is that uh, there's no excuse. Each one of us cannot be part of uh, you know, solving that problem. Each one of us is trying to f solve the problem in their own way. That means even we can actually do that. Instead of focusing on all the 17 issues, we can pick up something which is very close to our heart, something which is very local. We could try to solve and do a better job of actually doing it. Okay? And uh, money is not an issue if the idea is right. And I think solutions is something which we actually have to look forward to. Okay? And uh, so that is, uh, for me, the takeaway. Uh, uh, and let me move to the next one, the spirit of time. And I think I want, to, uh, un I want to start with you. And you have been as part of the whole sustainable and you know, supporting a lot of initiatives. What is that one big challenge which you feel is holding back us in terms of the pace at which we are able to solve the SDG problem? What is that one? Sure. I, I think one thing, since this topic is really focused on outcomes and solutions, these are complex solutions. Even if you take SDG 1, ending poverty, right? Just because you increase agriculture yields, if you don't give access to education, healthcare, water, sanitation, energy, you're not really moving the needle. And the whole potential and therefore the promise of impact investing is can you take effective solutions to scale? It's not just about the money, it's also about the cultural context understanding, which is intellectual capital, 
and on top of that, social, co connect, uh, social capital. So financial, social, intellectual capital deployed for multi-sectoral solutions. Okay, so you have to like what they call the crossover rather than just focusing on one part. Absolutely, and that's why as a firm we've been doing this for 10 years and we focus um, across five sectors, healthcare, education, agriculture, energy, and financial inclusion because we feel that it's a compounding solution to tackle even just one SDG. Okay, so rather they just don't see in isolation. So David, from your perspective, what is that one challenge we should actually focus on to solve which would accelerate the process? Well, in terms of what we can do as an asset manager, what we want to do is to convince more of our clients to invest in this way, uh, uh, to invest uh, aligned with the SDGs. Uh, and I think the well, one thing that holds many uh, institutional or, or uh, you know, uh, high net worth in investors back is this idea that we're giving up something in terms of return to invest in this way. Uh, now, there are some people that have just made the conscious decision to invest for impact. Uh, but for those that haven't, we really feel if we look at these STGs not just as goals, but we realize that actually these are themes that will provide you above average growth for years and years to come. You turn this whole fiduciary duty argument on its head. And what we want to do is to explain to people the way that we select the companies are you know, based on their uh, revenue contribution to the SDGs, but we also want to make sure that the returns that we get are going to be attractive as well. Uh, and we feel you know, very much comfortable that because of the way we select companies and manage our ESG risks in the portfolio, we should be able to beat the uh, standard benchmarks, not uh, the special ESG ones. Okay. So crossover, education, and Cherry, from your perspective, what is that one challenge we should actually address which could actually accelerate? Um, sorry, we, when we, uh, you know, after Bali, what, what we realize is that actually uh, there's a lot of gaps uh, in order to actually move forward. And we created the, an acronym. It's actually like the alphabets, A, B, C, D, F, G, so align. Alignment. We need a super alignment, a blend. Uh, change the DNA of enterprises. I think what David is saying, sort of the enterprises, your strategy, have to be aligned with the SDG. So we call it Better Business, Better World uh, under the Business Sustainable Development Commission. Uh, enterprise, fund. So the funds have to also change the DNA. So what this forum is about is, is you know, towards that mindset shift. And uh, also G for governments. So the policies have to change. The governments have to think about how to blend, how to align, and how to, how to move forward with um, uh, uh, collaborating with business and other sectors. And HI is actually the alignment that we try to use, happiness impact, whether it's impact finance, green finance, blended finance, we are there for happiness of the people through the SDGs. Thank you. A very spiritual way of actually looking at solving the problem of happiness. Uh, so Francis, so from your side, what is holding back the growth? What is that one challenge you want to highlight? Um, I would say it's a beyond capital mindset. So I think right now, uh, I take Grimman as an example. Our Grimman Ventures has leveraged more than uh, $20 million of investments. So we have our own Grimm Ventures investing into uh, Omnipoc, a new, new type of food tech. But I think uh, it's quite difficult sometimes to talk to the investors, saying that, hey, Green Monday is also a movement. It's also a platform helping the whole industry getting the, like that to grow. And uh, they, sometimes they are more of the investment focus. Oh, it's, uh, it's our deal. How can we get all the money earned by ourselves? But I think how, could, can, how to convince them the movement is equally important. If we really like to achieve the SDG goals, we cannot go alone. We need to work together. We need to benefit some of the people in the industry as well. So I think sometimes when people are just um, more deal-focused, seeing our measurements, seeing our own uh, return, I think we cannot see these kind of things. I think that's one of the things hold, hold, that, hold back that sometimes. Okay, look beyond return. So ladies always have the first and the last word. So we hear from you. What is that one yes, challenge? So for us, I agree with Enli. It's really multiple um, 
SDGs to just address one. So it's really an ecosystem. And for us, I think it's innovation. We need to have a lot of innovation in the way we do our business so that we can show a balance of that social impact, positive social and environmental impact could still deliver uh, very sustainable returns. It's the balance of that. Okay. Okay, so we have uh, 30 seconds left, so the spirit of time, so let me try to, you know, summarize uh, the challenges. In case if you have any comment, I'll just borrow two minutes uh, from the organizers in case if you have any comment. And I think my uh, conclusion here is uh, it is not one uh, organization or one sector to solve this problem. Okay, everybody has to come together to actually solve that problem. And what it requires is uh, the change in the mindset, it, it requires education, and it requires actually innovative solutions. Because that is how you can actually accelerate the whole process of actually changing. Because government alone on its own won't be able to solve a lot of problems. So everybody has to come together to actually make that happen. So I'm just going to borrow like two minutes from the organizers, and in case if you have any last comments or if organizers have any, uh, the audience have any questions, for the panel. Any last comment which we, you wanted to share, we missed? So I'm happy to sort of uh, maybe end on a little bit of a somber but real note. I mean, we said a lot why we're doing this, right? Because we live in a resource-constrained world where climate change, rising income inequality, um, poverty and environmental degradation are clear and present challenges. So my challenge to all of us here today, if you want to be a forward-looking investor, how do you make your portfolio future-proof and future-relevant? That's where sustainable investing comes in, whichever blend, whether it's inclusionary, exclusionary, or intentional impact. You can blend all of them. Okay. Yeah, so this is the only world we have to live. I think all of us have to work together to make sure that we take care of it, and uh, that's what sustainable investing is all about. And in 30 minutes, we managed to cover two key elements. I think we'll come back to the participants uh, about some of the things uh, what we are going to do uh, in terms of ideas to solve some of those problems. On that note, I would like to thank the panelists and everybody. Thank you.